growing up with a dad that is an alcoholic has shaped so much of who I am and affected me probably more than I was ever, I was ever aware of. I don't think I'm an alcoholic, but I do think I've got a problem with alcohol. I think I've abused it in the past and that there's potential I could end up being like me dad. I'm acutely aware of what my dad has lost by prioritising booze above everything else in his life. But I've never really understood the reasons why he drinks to excess, or why I do. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the bar lab. To help us both address why we have compulsive drinking habits, Dad has agreed to join me in London to speak to Tony Moss, Professor of Addictive Behaviour Science. He set up a bar to conduct his research. Um, so what I'd like to do today is to work through with each of you um, something called Drinking Motives Questionnaire. We'll just ask lots of different questions. So this questionnaire isn't actually about how much you drink, but it's getting you to think more about when you do drink, how familiar do these kind of examples sound. The scale is like one to five, going from never or almost never as kind of one and almost always, you'd say five. Um, if you're ready, we can make a start, yeah? Yeah. So. How often would you say you drink uh, because it helps you enjoy a party? Big social situations make me scared. Mm. And I cope with that, with alcohol. Mm. And I always have. Mm -hmm. So, five. Yeah. Always. So, a five for that one. Yeah. So how often would you say that you drink to be sociable? Always. Yeah. I don't like answering that one. Mm. Just okay. make us feel a bit angry at myself. Five. Yeah. Um, how often would you say that you drink because you like the feeling? Four. Mm -hmm. Four. Always five. Mm. What love doing then? Yeah. I like who I am when I've had a drink mm. and I hate who I am when I'm drunk. Mm. Drunk me is um, argumentative, belligerent and aggressive. She makes a lot of trouble for sober me. It's always my first thought. Is, is the aim drunkenness that you like, or is it's it...? It's a feeling of being intoxicated. Yeah. And the sooner, the better. First thing that jumps out at me is the link between alcohol and social situations is strong for, for both of you. The other thing was that you, you both seem to be sort of using alcohol almost as a, as a coping strategy, as a way of, of dealing with uh, difficult feelings or, or situations. Very similar there, Dad. Mm. A lot of the research that we've done looked at what we call kind of intergenerational transference. You know, children from quite a young age, in fact, will start to learn and think things about alcohol. It's both what they see and it's also what they hear. That kind of imprints from a young age. And in much the same way, the motivations and the beliefs that we have about alcohol do pass on from one generation to the next. Lots of different feelings coursing through us at the minute. but. Tony said there's like a direct relation to how your family view alcohol and how you're brought up and everything. And it's no wonder that our scores were so similar. Growing up with an alcoholic dad was a lonely experience. But one in five people like me struggle with a parent drinking. So I'm going to meet two women with similar stories. Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm Vicky. I'm Amy. Nice to Hi. meet you, Amy. I'm Maria. Nice to meet you, Maria. How are you? I'm OK. I've always just felt like all I knew was what I knew, so it was normal. Mm -hmm. But you know, once you grow up and you realise your family dynamic potentially isn't what everyone else is experiencing, then I felt like I had to like hide it almost, mm -hmm. and there was like a level of shame. And I suppose that's just carried us through most of me adult years, you know? Do you feel like because of who your dads were, we were almost predisposed? to have the issues surrounding alcohol we've got. It definitely caused me to question my drinking a lot and to be quite worried about it to the point where I now choose not to drink. So are you completely teetotal now? Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm at the age now, like, I'm 34. Everyone's dying to know when I'm going to have kids. Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel the reason I have put off having children is I'm so scared. I'm going to end up just like me dad. I don't want to have kids like me who feel slightly broken. 
you shouldn't have the fear that you're going to end up down the same route as your dad because you're already doing something different than what he's done. I felt like everything I've ever worried about, they felt it too. It did make us feel really validated. It also gave us options for going forward. Talking to my dad openly about his alcoholism is something that I've struggled with my whole life. So I've brought him to London to see a family mediator in the hope she can give me the strength to improve our communication. Hi. Hi nice to meet you, Vicky. Hi. Hi, John. Today's session is very much about enhancing communication. We don't tend to share our thoughts with our loved ones all the time. So um, be prepared. You might feel a little bit uncomfortable. What I would like you to do is for one of you to be the speaker and then the other person to be the listener. I can go first. Yeah, because I can bounce off you then. OK. This is really hard for us to say because I love you so much, but I think I have enabled you in the past with your alcohol because um, I didn't want to make you feel worse. Over the last couple of weeks, I've, I've met some people in like a similar position to me um, and I found it really comforting actually to, um, to talk about like things that only the child of an alcoholic has experienced. Yeah. They, both of their dads have died through alcoholism. Yeah. I made this, I promised to myself that I was gonna say all the things that I bet they wished they'd said as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I really wanna be a mum. I'm sorry. I really want to have kids. I want... I want my kids to meet you. I'm so worried, Dad. And if you don't stop drinking... and you don't get a proper handle on it, that you won't meet them. And... that really scares us. It would be a lie for me to say I'll never drink again, to you. I will try my absolute hardest. But the awful thing is I thoroughly believe that in 10 years' time I could be saying exactly the same thing to you. If you're f***ing lucky. <laughs>